Hello and welcome to um, part three and four. We're going to be looking into the skeletal system and the muscular system. Um, the skeletal system consists of several uh, different uh, bone types. Bone is the body's toughest material. The human body has 206 bones and each is attached to its neighbor by connective tissue that allows the skeletal uh, to provide the whole body with a frame of structure. And the skeletal also provides the most vulnerable internal organs with a means of protection and a point of attachment for the muscles. Uh, being familiar with the skeletal structure is very important for therapists as it also, also uh, provides landmarks for muscle location. So do remember that. Main functions of the human skeleton. Support. The skeleton, skeleton carries the entire body's weight and gives us the structural ability to stand up. Body bones uh, gives us our shape, okay? Uh, protection. The skeletal sur uh, skeleton surrounds our vital organs like the ribcage around the heart and protects them. Attachments. So the bones provide the muscles and ligaments with an attachment point. Movement. Working with the bones, muscles and ligaments allow us through leverage to articulate the body. Blood formation. Red blood cells from inside the bones or the marrow. Uh, mineral storage in the bones, calcium and, and phosphorus are stored in bones and teeth. 99% of calcium is found in the body as and when the body needs it, it is released. So, you can see there's a lot of benefits to the skeleton um, and knowing about the skeleton system. Now, you, in this diagram, you could see that we have, uh, what is it called, um, different names. Okay, so we got the skull mandible clavicle scapula even like for example your your bones here that's the fibula you've got the tibia kneecap is called a patella so i would say um sorry about the noise i would say to learn about the different um different words because if you know the different words, you, you'll sound more professional with your clients as well. And you will be able to, uh, you know, use this as a landmark for muscle location. So all the best with that. And furthermore, we go to the, the skull. The skull rests on the vertebral column upper end and weighs about 11 pounds. It's made out of 22 bones. There are eight main bones that make up the cranium and 14 that make up the skeleton, uh, skeleton's facial structure. The cranium encloses <coughs> and provides crucial brain protection as well as providing a surface attachment for the different skull muscles. The spine. The spine consists of 33, 33 bones of irregular shape called the vertebrae. Each vertebrae has a hole in the center running through the spinal cord. <laughs> the spinal cord consists of five separate sections. Okay, so you've got the uh, seven uh, cervical vertebrae. All right, so basically get yourself a spinal cord diagram. You've got the seven cer cervical vertebrae, top of the spine and the neck, 12 thoracic vertebrae from below the shoulder to the last rib, five lumbar vertebrae, lower back, sacrum vertebrae, bottom bone, coccyx vertebrae, the end of the tailbone. <laughs> So, yeah, you have to learn about the spinal cord, okay? So, if you know about the spinal cord, then pretty much um, you know where there's T1, L1, and all the rest of that, okay? So, this will actually give you a good understanding. And if anyone's interested to get into chiropractor later on, and you know or if you are already a chiropractor then obviously the massage will really benefit you as well uh, furthermore it talks about bones like the bones have different shapes according to their functions so you've got long bones short bones flat bones irregular bones so the long bo bones will be similar like the humerus humerus tibia fibula these are long bones like, like the long bones on your legs and then you've got short bones such as you know um, the fingers and toe bones are short bones okay then you've got irregular bones like the rib cage for example um, and then you've got flat bones such as uh, where's it got the skull for example so yeah cartilage is a dense connective tissue that is harder than tendons but not stronger than bone it is found in many parts of the bodies including the bones 
an articular surface, rib cage, ear, nose, bronchial tubes, and intervertebral discs. Um, furthermore, looks into ossification. Ossification is the bone formation process in which connective tissues such as cartilage form inside um, into the bone or tissue similar to bone. The skeleton is made entirely of cartilage when the body is first formed and, and this begins to turn in a few weeks. In 20 years, the process will be completed. After this time, the body may be further ossified after injury or trauma. So it's basically they're saying that that's when the bones stop developing. Okay, so after that age, um, and then, um, you know, if there is any injuries to someone, then obviously that injury ossification will happen just to for repair of the bone. Okay, now next part we'll be looking into is the muscular system. So the body has 640 muscles. Now remember, we're looking into the skeleton system, so we could these are landmarks to be used for um, identifying where to do the massage. Um, and then the muscular system is another diagram you would have to study, learn about the different muscles. In that way, you would know where they are because in massage, we are trying to get rid of all the toxins that is building up in the muscles and um, you know around those areas so we could drain out the system and benefit the client for providing better circulation and also relax relaxing their you know the end, uh, endocrine system as well and so many other systems um, in the body as well so functions of the muscles so it is important that you understand about the functions of the mu muscles how it provides protection, movement, types of muscles. So we've got different types of muscles. We've got the voluntary muscle, which is like, if I voluntarily move my arm, for example, um, I'm just doing that because I'm commanding my brain to voluntarily move my arm, okay, through the, the nervous, um, you know, telling the nervous system of how to do this, okay. Um, and then you have the involuntary muscles. So the muscles, um, that we do not have conscious control over. So, for example, your intestine is digesting food. You know, it's getting breaking it down. We don't have any control over that. Um, so, yeah, the heart is a good example of uh, involuntary muscle beating without direct control. So it just beats by itself. Types of muscle tissue. So we got the uh, skeletal voluntary. We got the cardiac, which is the heart muscle involuntary, and we got the smooth muscle. So most of the internal organs are smooth muscles. So it is found in the bladder of the urine, uh, the bladder of the gall, arteries, veins, and digestive tract. The hormones and the nervous system control smooth muscles. We can't control smooth muscle consciously. Muscular movement of the bones. So skeletal muscle creates bones and thus body parts. Movements by contact, uh, contracting or pulling on them. Muscles are unable to push. A tough connection, connective tissue called the tendon attaches each skeletal muscle to the bone. The muscle and tendon movement pulls the bone to make it act as a lever. Okay, so how muscles work. Now this page will look into how muscles work. All right, the different ways. Um, this is component three. They need a continuous supply of oxygen for, for our muscles to work efficiently and they also need fuel. The fuel they need is called glucose and it's transported through the bloodstream to the muscles. The process is referred to as oxidation um, or breathing. It is known as aerobic when this process involves oxygen. It is a, an efficient way of producing energy. The result is anaerobic respiration when insufficient oxygen reaches the muscles and as can happen during sudden physical exercise. So oxygen depth exists in anaerobic respiration. This means that glucose is broken down in the process without oxygen resulting in glucose releasing only a portion of its energy. The uh, muscle tissue remains a waste product called lactic acid. The presence of lactic acid will cause muscle fatigue or cramping if oxygen does not reach the muscle. All right, so how muscles work, that was. And then principal actions of the muscle. So we've got flexors, extensors, abductors. The list is all here. So flexors decreases the angle at a joint. Okay, so that's like your biceps, increases the an angle at a joint, your triceps. So these are the different ways the muscle functions. Now, if you need to understand how the muscle, the way the muscle functions, um, actions of the muscles, 
So when you're doing massage, you know how to handle the client as well, and you'll be able to avoid any injuries. So do learn those uh, factors which affect muscle tissue. So internal po uh, internal things will be posture. So poor posture can cause muscle strain that has no uh, that has to strain in order to maintain balance. Thoracic balance is maintained by constantly tensing and relaxing muscle and muscle groups to help the body stay upright and safe. So posture is something that um, will affect muscle. Now, a lot of clients that we have seen, uh, if they have very poor posture, they will not be able to um, help that muscle function good because one thing they will be pretty much in pain due to the fact that it is very tight. They haven't used it or they have overused it. Um, some people carry bags or you know they carry heavy luggage or they do some heavy physical work so it kind of puts a lot of strain on that muscle or they're not doing any exercise and they're just pretty much being um, you know located in one position like sitting on a desk all day long or driving for example so posture some some people forget they always have to keep their spinal cord straight and you know pretty much um, um, what is it called, um, improve the posture so they will not get any uh, muscle issues. So drugs, anesthetics and, and relaxing muscles enable relaxation of the tissue. Anti-inflammatory drugs can cure damaged tissue and hormones can accelerate muscle muscle tissue growth. Psychological mental stress can cause tension in, physio, uh, physio, in physiology. So these are, if you have psychological issues as well, that could also affect your muscular um, tissues you know um, so it's best we try to uh, not be stressed just make sure we are not stressed okay I will try not to be stressed touch regular massage can maintain healthy muscle tissue by improving circulation and boosting the lymphatic system it helps tone the muscle and eliminate lactic acid so you got reflex heat cold in response to any external force or direct pain muscle will contract Involuntary in a cold environment, muscle tissue contracts, tensions up. Alternative, alternatively, in response to warm, hot, or hot climates, or direct heat or heat, um, you know, uh, it could react the opposite, opposite way. So, electrical electricity, light rays. It is possible to use electrical current to stimulate muscle tissue movement. Um, infrared uh, rays are capable of penetrating, relaxing muscle tissue, and improving circulation. So, in your clinic, you may have one of those infrared lights that you probably get from Amazon, eBay or somewhere and you know you use it to heat up that body part so it kind of provides a nice sort of relaxation as we just read uh, how it could help. So another thing is we've got a map here now you can get a lot of maps from Google images if you just put the, the human muscular system or human muscle system um, it will come up with your the, the one that shows you the back and the front is good because uh, it shows you all the muscles in the front and all the muscles in the back so if you're doing massage as a Swedish massage therapist then learn about these different words and they sound amazing you know neck your stenocolloid mastoid muscle so you'll be like whoa that's amazing you know so you learn about these different words but learn about what few words each day and you know you sound very very kind of like you know your stuff you know and you should know your stuff because you are doing massage you should know about how the muscles function and how they are arranged um another one the calf muscle gastrocnemius muscle you've got the hamstrings um hamstring groups are f biceps femoris you got the Semitendinosis, semimembranosis. So, some of these words, even I get tongue twisted. But you know, if uh, some of some of you guys, you should find it really easy. So that's the muscles. Uh, next component, we will get into looking into the circulatory system so and um, furthermore looking into the skin as well because we're dealing with a different major organ so see you on the next clip thank you bye, -bye.